got my arms out, I got my head up. He gets to my feet and he's coming back up my body and he poses the question, what's your plan, little man? I said, man, I'm going to D1. I'm going to college. He said, you'll probably end up in cell block D1. And he went to walk off. I walked with him. I tapped his arm. He turned around. I said, you got the wrong guy. He said, no, I know about you, sarcasm kicks in. He said, didn't you have two uncles that came to the same school? I said, yes, sir. He said, weren't they little athletes just like you? Like people talked about them and how they could play sports and all that? I said, yes, sir. He said, aren't they serving 13 and 40 years at the federal penitentiary, not even 10 minutes away from these front doors? I said, yes, sir. He said, absolutely. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. You'll probably end up in cell block D1. Walked off. I walked with him. I tapped his chest. He turned around. I said, I'm telling you, you got the wrong guy. He said, we'll see. I said, we will. And I had this dream that, man, if I could just make it to the NFL, I could get my mother off of that double shift at Wendy's. Like, man, if I can make it to the NFL, me and my cousins, you won't have to miss meals. If I could just make it to that NFL, man, everything would make sense. And when I got my scholarship from Tennessee, you know the first person I went to see? That cop. I went to him and he said something to me and it rang so true. I slipped my paper across the table to him and he stood up and he said, I want to ask you a question. How did you do it? He said, every kid that comes in these doors, they say that. But they end up selling drugs across the street at the gas station. Or they end up going to prison, going to jail. Like everybody wants something out of life. He said, the reason I said that to you, he said, I want you to understand something. I'm here every day. He said, the only reason I said it to you, he said, I wasn't even trying to break you. I just wanted to see would you be willing to fight for the thing that you said you wanted when somebody came at you and they tried to crush you and say because of your family history, because of your lineage, you're probably going to end up just like them. I wanted to see would you be willing to fight for what you said you wanted. Coming into my junior year, I get my paperwork back from the NFL and I'm a projected first round draft pick. Who knew? Kid from the two bedroom home, 14 people. Now come out my first game, have a great game, and the quarterback just so happens to drop back and he releases the ball to a guy coming down my sideline. And as soon as I made contact with the guy, I knew something was wrong. It seemed as if every breath of my body left, my body went completely limp. I fell to the ground, I blacked out. That had never happened to me before. My eyes opened, my teammates ran over to me. They said, ain't get up, let's rock, let's close it out, let's go. I said, I can't. There's a shot going from my neck to my toes, I can't feel anything. And I remember they brought the spine board out, put me on it, they're wheeling me off to the field. Doctors came running from the opposite side and the lead doctor says, guys, get in here, we gotta rush this kid back to emergency surgery, he's about to die. You ruptured up subclavian artery in your chest, you're bleeding internally. We don't take you back and perform surgery right now. He said, you won't be here in the morning. And the game of football on my scale of life was that big. The NFL, hmm, that big. And I'm like, man, Inc., was that it? Like, that's all you really wanted? Was a contract from the NFL? That was it? I was embarrassed. I just got up every day, went through drills, and man, I'm gonna make it to the NFL. That's be, that'll be it. No value, no substance, nothing. There's a quote that says, when do a person start to really live? When a person has encountered death. Now I'd encountered death and I had survived it. And I guarantee you, it was literally as if somebody pulled the shades up on my life and they said, now you see life for what it's really worth. You thought it was about the NFL. Now you really see life for what it's really worth. Like I thought I was driven when I played sports, but man, every day I get up that drive different. Like every single day, I get up to impact life. That is why I go at life with the drive, the dedication, and the commitment level that I do. And when adversity, opposition, and the thing that should have crushed me, I step back, I embrace it and say, life, that's all you got? This was your best shot? And I find it amazing, man, how in life, people say, man, I'm gonna do something. I'm on fire, I'm committed to it. But a change in circumstance 
a change in situation. I don't get what I thought I was going to get. Now the mission that they once set out on to change the world or impact people, it means nothing to them. As long as what you do and what you're connected to serves a greater purpose than just yourself, son, you will always trample the opposition. You will always trample the adversity. You will always trample the challenges of life. One thing about it, character is not something that you're born with. Character is something that you get up every single day, you fight and you build it. And every single day, the process is happening constantly in life through opposition, through adversity, and through challenges. At the end of the day, it's about who we become, and it's about what we did. Go get it.